Hello, 89 and Vine team. This is Christoph Kaiser back with an update on the digital model. We've, we've taken this quite a bit further in the last couple of days. I wanted to share that and also um, share with you our process as we start to select the views that are going to tell the story of this place. Um, but first, I just want to acquaint you with some of the major changes. We've started to introduce wood structure into the wine tasting center that sits atop this, this plinth, which really is working with a lot of the existing topography. Um, there were some comments in the last round, which I really agree with, um, one of them being um, the, the grain silos. We, we had this line of, of, I think, six or eight of them, and they really were serving to block view into the project. And so we've reduced these to um, four grain silos, and we've gone back to one of the earlier building forms that we had in the, in the, um, the initial concept sketches, which is this long sloping agricultural building which is tied very directly to the vineyards. Um, this is a building that houses the equipment used for harvesting the grapes um, and then this is also I think the venue through which the, um, the harvesting process would be made known to um, patrons of 89 and Vine, people that come to visit this place, people that are curious about um, the industry and, and what this place is all about generally. This is also tied to the orchard, um, which is a decomposed granite orchard that, that can also be used as a, as a parking lot. Um, but uh, we see this as being a, a metal building with wood accents and having um, glass roll-up doors on either side so this whole thing can be opened up. Um, in the case of a farmer's market, um, this would be, I think, a really, really great building. Um, one of the other comments was with regard to uh, the building language of these metal sheds, and it again is a comment that I agree with, um, and that has to do with the warmth of the place and can we add wood accents and that kind of thing. Um, a lot of the warmth, I think, that is lacking in a kind of SimCity rendition of, of a project, um, what we're looking at now, will be answered when we do the final renderings. So when we add our entourage and we, when we build out these interiors for individual views and you get the, the wooden furniture, the bistro tables and chairs, um, the, the tall desert grasses that, that fill this central green space, um, trees casting real shadows, leaves you know, that are blown in on the street, those sorts of things, I believe, are gonna add the warmth that's lacking in, in this, but we've also gone ahead and, and added some of that warmth in just using wood timber elements um, in, in some cases. Uh, I'm going to start us out looking at the area. One of the main objectives of me showing you this right now is to, uh, we need to start selecting our views so we can start doing our finished renderings. That's a very long process to dial in each image. It's a bit like crafting a photo shoot for advertising. You have to think about the demographic, um, the time of day, you know, you're selling a lifestyle, you're selling um, a place that people want to go to. So it's, it is, uh, there's a lot involved there. So here's the aerial view. I think this does a good job of showing this, the, the necklace of duplexes that is the backdrop to the project. Um, uh, the barn, the main barn building, the wedding chapel that's going to be surrounded by this bosque of trees. Uh, this again is the portion that will later be built out for the culinary school. This is a potential extension of the culinary school, a potential boutique um, hotel. And then you have the main street here. This is the agricultural building. Um, silo number one here on the furthest north we see as potentially being um, like a wine bar or a beer garden slash concierge um, lobby for these three other silos um, that could be each individually rented as um, Airbnb or a, a bed and breakfast sort of thing. Or these all four could be rented out to individual um, retailers, people that want to have a very small shop in a very unique location. Um, we think that would be quite marketable and enticing for a lot of different smaller businesses. Um, going now to what we're calling the arrival shot. This is kind of the main money shot. Welcome to 89 and Vine. Um, again, this is a shot that beckons you. You want to go into this place. We're looking at various perspectives, um, view angles rather. 
and you can see what I just did there, changing the view angle of the camera, it's the difference between taking a, an image with a telephoto versus a wide angle lens. You never want to get too zoomy because things in the distance become indiscernibly small. We landed at 45 degrees, which I think is a good um, sort of middle ground where it shows you the full breadth of the project in one perspective without getting too zoomy. Uh, next, I'm going to jump over to Main Street. This still needs some work architecturally. We're not entirely satisfied with what with what's happening here, but the idea is that there'd be an entry, sort of a monument sign here that says, you know, it's it's the hello or the welcome to Main Street. Um, there's a central green space. We're doing parallel parking down the side so the width of the street does not get too big in relationship to the verticality of the architecture. Uh, Main Street 2, this is a second option for, for telling the Main Street story, which puts you inside of Main Street. There's a central water feature. Uh, this is the main gangway that gains you access to the parking and that is on the east and the west side of Main Street. And then beyond you can see the central green and the large barn um, off in the distance. And you can actually get a glimpse of the chapel, the wedding chapel that's through, through the barn. This is Main Street 3. This is a more axial sort of vehicular view if you're driving in a car. This is what you would see. We could even, we could drop it down. Something more like this um, would be more driving height. Um, central Green. So the story of this Central Green space is a big one. This is where 4th of July happens and thousands of people come to watch the fireworks, to sit on picnic blankets with um, with cheese and candy apples from the orchard. Um, we see this as a, as, a, as a very big draw for a lot of people. And so um, we'd like to capture that story in one, in one scene. So this is one of those options taken from the vantage of the vineyards, which I think is a, is a very powerful one. Another one we're calling Central Green One is at the edge of the Central Green space. Central Green Two is Again, at the edge of the central green space, the barn is a little bit more prominent here, shooting out the wine tasting center at the end, and then a gravel path. Um, this is where tractors drive, the crackle of gravel under your feet. You're confronted right here with the rawness of the vineyards, um, juxtaposed with the more manicured sort of uh, park area on the right. Central Green 3 is emerging from Main Street. This is, this is another powerful shot where you would have, this is the overhang of the, the northernmost building on Main Street, this is a cafe, there's tables and chairs, um, people getting their morning coffee, long streaks of light shooting across, um, and then just, you know, you're just emerging and seeing, seeing some really beautiful morning light in that green space. Wine tasting, um, now this next series of four images or four image options is about the wine tasting center, um, telling the story of this, and again, to acquaint you with the phasing, we don't have that documentation uh, visible yet, but the idea is that phase one would be this portion of the building right here. Phase one is a wine tasting center. This um, second portion of the building gets built out later and will later occupy on two floors the Culinary Institute. Um, so wine tasting one tells the story from, again, the vineyard perspective. You're in the vineyards, you're looking at this building, you can see the green space over here. Another option is uh, what we're just calling wine tasting, is the title of this perspective, and this is slightly elevated looking back towards Main Street Agriculture Building and the silos, and you're introduced with this, um, this sort of mesa or this viewing platform from which you can look down on the rest of the project. Again, using the stepping topography. The topography grows substantially from this side of the project to the north and so we're using that in this case with one retaining wall creating a flat zone upon which the building sits. Wine tasting interior zero is you've just you're just walking outside of those glass doors there's a recessed sitting area with about 12 chairs sitting in it. Uh, there's a fire pit in the center. Here again the reflecting pool is reflecting the setting sun over Jerome. The mountains are back here. Um, and then you can see the vineyards in the foreground, and then 89 with, you know, we we'll probably have some streaking cars um, passing by in the distance there. Wine tasting interior one, we're calling this one. I think this is probably the view. Uh, it has the bar in the foreground. There's two people sitting here at the bar enjoying a glass of Chardonnay. There's perhaps one person here with their back to the camera. 
There's a sofa on the right over here with some people enjoying a cheese plate, perhaps. Um, this is a built-in um, uh, a built-in seating area with a small table sort of nestled into this field stone wall. And then outside you get the same scene with Adirondack chairs along the water feature and the setting sun and Jerome in the background. So those are our potential views. We'll be talking about these tomorrow at the meeting. And um, I just wanted to put this out there so we can have some time to think about it and have some titles uh, to shoot back and forth. And hopefully we'll get some good, uh, some good dialogue going. Thank you very much. Uh, we're looking forward to the next steps. Thank you.